It's time for Focus Forward, sponsored by Invest Grand Bahama. It's Grand Bahama's best talk show, highlighting all of the positive things happening in Freeport. Look forward to a special guest each week that will tell you about events, activities, and initiatives that are making a remarkable impact on our community. You'll also hear from local business owners and get a heads up on deals and special promotions. It's time to Focus Forward. Good morning and welcome back. Thanks for joining us on Grand Bahama's Best Talk Show, Focus Forward, sponsored by the Invest Grand Bahama Unit of the Grand Bahama Port Authority. My name is Glendia Sweeting, Business Development Officer at GBPA, and I am joined by my co-host, Alex Thompson. I'm going to call you Executive Director. <laughs> <laughs> she has so many hats. So I mean, this gets, this gets difficult each and every week. So well, every week, I'm just going to say Alex name. Thompson. We know her name, right? <laughs> Alex Thompson is joining us today. Alex, good morning. I'm joining her every day. Welcome back, Glendia. I missed you Thank last you. week. You did. I did. Oh, I missed you. Just so you Bahamas guys know. Business Outlook Bahamas was last business week. Bahamas Business Outlook. I am the lovely Alex Thompson, the Public Affairs Director of the Downtown Freeport you Business You can do your introduction. It's the okay. The best business association on Grand Bahama. <laughs> Okay. Yes. But welcome back. Welcome back. Thank you, you were at Business Outlook. I missed Focus Forward. You I missed focus, focus Forward. I missed you and we missed all the great information that was shared at Business Outlook. Yeah. Well, so. we're gonna get we're gonna get a little bit of that today mm -hmm. because what we did was we said, you know what, we need to bring one of these dynamic speakers yes, to yes. Focus Forward to talk about some of the important things that's affecting us here in the Bahamas, but in particular on Freeport Island and uh, Freeport Island, and, and Freeport Grand City. Bahamas. So there so we go. definitely we're gonna get into that. But of course Thanks again for tuning in with us. Of course, we love to have you each and every week. You only can stay on the pulse with us right here, Focus Forward. Yes. And of course, you can watch us Tuesday evenings at 9.30 p.m., Saturday mornings at 9.30 yep. a.m. Listen to us right now on KISS 96 and Power 104. Shout out to our guys over there that are always looking out for us. And of Alex. course, on Facebook Live, thanks for joining us. If you have any questions, we're looking forward to hearing from you. We're everywhere. 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 Don't forget, do. we're also on the... Zedness um, yes. YouTube, as well as the Grand Bahama Port Authority YouTube page. Yes. We are at Invest Grand Bahama Small Business Bureau page at Empowering Licensees on Facebook. You all put your phones under the desk and message your friend, WhatsApp. Tell and somebody. You want to be listening to this show today because we've Definitely. got the information. If you didn't make it to Bahamas Outlook, you want to tune in. We've got all the hot news. And you all know me. I'm asking the questions that you all want to ask. Right. I'm in. The, I'm not in the hot seat, but our guest is in the hot seat today. <laughs> okay. Yes. So yes. Today yes. We're going to be talking about the Bahamas ascension to the W, the WTO, and of course, Alex. The that grill. is what is on the grill That's today. On the grill. And so, we're sizzling with it. We're sizzling, which means yes. we need to know. Yes. People are talking. What do we Every, need to know? What, what we need to know. We need to know. People want to know more. What is it? Yes. What is it about? People want to know. Uh, does that mean we're going to have? Um, they said free trade as citizens. That that means we're going to have foreigners coming in here and taking over our jobs. That that means the big stores the retail are giants. Come in. Yeah. Right? You know, is there going to be a Walmart that's going to knock me out of business? Are we being forced to do it? Like, is this something that the government or the is Bahamas forcing is us being to do? Forced to do? Had they done something underhandedly? that we don't know about. Well, I don't know about all that, but we're going to find know. out. We're going to, know. to find out all about it, and we're going to hear it from the right persons, and certainly that mean we're gonna we want taxes? to. Oh, Lord. I Maybe that's know. a question. Maybe that's a question that you need to ask. There are a I lot of things know. about it. I'm also understanding that there are also a lot of misconceptions about Very things true. that people do not understand. And so we certainly want to get the correct information so that we can now begin to understand a little bit better for ourselves. You need to know if it's really good for us. Yes. Because we're trusting the government to make the right decisions. We need to know if WTO is good for the Bahamas. This is my land. I love it here. Don't you know? Yeah, Bahama Land. This is my Bahama Land. This is my Grand Bahama. My Grand Bahama. This is my Grand Bahama. <laughs> if y'all don't know, this is my Grand Bahama. I love this place. And I'm going to make sure, hold the people accountable for what's going on. Okay. That's it. Well, That's definitely, it. we're going to have a great day today. Today's guest is a Bahamian business consultant and a director on the board of a number of companies, including Keystone Solutions Limited. That's right. And mm -hmm. in September 2018, the government of the Bahamas appointed him to lead the country's negotiation team for ascension to World Trade Organization membership. Additionally, he leads the Government and Public Policy Institute at the University of the Bahamas, and Mr. Lang is a former Minister of Economic Development and Minister of Finance in 
the Bahamas. So it's certainly a pleasure to welcome to Focus Forward. Our entire show is dedicated to having a discussion with this gentleman. He is Mr. Shivago Lang, Chief Negotiator for the Bahamas Ascension to the World Trade Organization. Welcome to Focus Forward. Thank you very much. It's good to be here and uh, good day to your listening audience and Thank watching you. audience. And, yes. and watching us. Listen, yeah. you're the of our, chief our negotiator. Yes. You know what that means. You're the top dog. You're the main man. You're the one. You're the MVP. For negotiations. <laughs> For negotiations. For negotiations. For negotiations. Yeah. Now, I had a sneak peek and an opportunity to be able to catch your presentation at the Bahamas Business Outlook last week, Thursday. And so certainly we had to have you here on our show because we want to take it a little bit more in depth. But of course, we want to be able to have you share as much information as possible because there is a lot, like we spoke about just a little bit earlier, there's a lot that people need to know and want to know. Conceptions. So what we do here is we want to start you with allowing you to kind of put this all into some context for okay. us. So Tell us, what is the World Trade Organization and what is its purpose? Okay, great. Uh, the World Trade Organization, uh, following World War II, a number of countries in the world, 24 countries or thereabout, came together and decided that prior to World War II, the way they traded with each other was like in a warlike fashion. They were actually doing things that prevented them from selling and buying from each other, okay. so they would they would ban each other's products. They would uh, limit the amount that people could uh, import. They would uh, have these technical barriers, you know, sophisticated ways of preventing people from bringing things into their country. Uh, they would have high tariffs, you know, like tack on real high taxes, so that people it was too expensive to export to them. Well, obviously, that meant that people had less choice because of it. Less trade was happening, so the economy wasn't growing, and nobody wanted to repeat that. And so what they decided was, let's agree. That's why it's called a trade agreement. Let's agree amongst ourselves how we will buy and sell to each other. Mm. Sounds pretty simple. Okay? Right. So if we're going to do that, let's agree. We won't discriminate against each other, meaning you don't treat one of the agreement, the contracting parties uh, goods one way and then treat another contracting party's good another way. Be fair. If you can do it for Mexico, do it for Canada. Do it for the United States or vice versa, right? So that's one arrangement. They also agreed if you allow one of the members' product or service into your country, if you allow it, don't treat it differently than you treat the similar product in your own country. That's also th right? very Because easy. they're saying... Don't, don't charge a 60% value-added tax to the foreign product you allowed in. And why did you allow it in? Because one of your countrymen ordered it. Mm, okay. That's not, nobody sends you stuff. That is true. It's coming because somebody they, here wanted it. They requested right. it. That's right. So don't then, because they requested something versus your own locally produced something, put a 20% value-added tax on that and a 12% on yours. That's not That's discriminatory. Don't do that. And then they say, listen, if you're going to have an agreement with us, let's also ensure that we're transparent. Say what the rules are for how you trade. Okay. How do you export? How do you import? How do you do business? So that everyone knows the rules. We're not going to tell you what rules to have, but at least let everybody know what the rules are. Just to okay. be transparent. Transparency. So if yours right. is different from mine. It doesn't matter. No, I have I just to decide know what it is. If I'm going to That's right, have to go and do it. You. Exactly. Ah. The other rule is... Let's agree on a way we can settle our disputes with each other. So don't take out action against the next party on your own. Let's agree a way to do it. Like most contracts, if you sign a good contract, it has what it called an arbitration clause. That means that when we and you and I disagree, we have agreed a method to resolve our issues. Ah. Right. And so they have another. That's the, so that's the basic agreement that was signed. Uh, under what is, what's then called a general agreement on trade and tariffs. Over time, more and more countries joined that agreement. So by 1995, when they had negotiated what they call rounds of negotiation, negotiations, they agreed that if we are going to have this many members join this agreement, remember, they're doing this voluntarily now. Right. No, nobody's forcing it's them to choice. join. This is choice. They're, they're agreeing to go because they think this is good for them. We should have an organization that oversees it. Oh, okay. okay. So let's form 
a World Trade Organization that oversees our agreement. Whose agreement? The countries that are a party to the agreement. It's our World Trade Organization, is what they were saying. And they will be responsible for ensuring that they are watching to see that all the members are complying with the rules. If they are not, that when there's time to negotiate, they provide a forum for that negotiation. And when it is time for there to be a dispute settling, there's a, a platform for that settling. And that's the World Trade Organization with its headquarters in Geneva. It was formed in 1995. And when it was formed in 1995, about 124 thereabouts countries became a, um, parties to the agreement and members of the World Trade Organization at that time. Every CARICOM country joined in 1995 except the Bahamas. Except the Bahamas. Except the Bahamas. Since that time, every country in the Western Hemisphere joined except the Bahamas in the Western Hemisphere of the planet. And since that time, almost a hun all, 164 countries joined are now members of the WTO. They are responsible collectively for 98% of world trade. Wow. And all of them, therefore, controlling 98% of world trade, are responsible for the rules of how trade will happen between them. The Bahamas is now one of 22 countries that are seeking to join. The other countries are countries like Iraq, Iran, Algeria, Mor Morocco, Bhutan. You all know these countries? Yes. yes. Ethiopia. We are one of those 22. If all of them join, they will be responsible for 99% of world trade how the trade is organized throughout right? the world. The rules, the rules, the rules between themselves. Mm -hmm. This is what is important. The WTO is in an organization that swooped in from outer space with power to tell you what to do. It's an agreement amongst a group of people, of countries. This is how we will do buying and selling between us. Now, if you didn't join in 1995, and you decide to join, as the Bahamas did in 2001, 18 years ago, you have to accede, not ascend, but accede. And that accession means you have now got to negotiate with the members mm. the terms of your entry. Mm. You want to get in the lodge? You if you're to. a lodge person, there are ways, there are rules you have to, you have to abide, come by. abide by, and you have to agree to do so. If you want to get in the cooperative, there are things that you have to agree to do to be in the cooperative. This is a cooperative, mm -hmm. and there are... You have to negotiate with the members right. your rules. So, for instance, the WTO doesn't tell you, does not say to you, you have to charge this amount of custom duty. It doesn't say to you, you have to let these, these foreign people in. Right. You have to let this foreign company in. It doesn't say that. What members may do is they may ask you as you negotiate with them, I notice you don't have wholesale and retail trade open for foreign participation. Why can't you open that area? And I will say... We, we won't because X, Y, and Z. And they'll say, but I'd like you to. And I say, but honestly, I can't do it. And that's the most, most could happen. We could then agree, okay, maybe what I could do is I can let you do it online. Okay. And then when it comes to commercial presence, like you being here and setting up, I, I can't let you do that. So what's, what's the worst thing that can happen to the Bahamas if we don't join the WTO? The worst thing that will happen to you is the, mem the benefits you get from joining, you don't get. That's it. The benefits that you can benefits get from that joining. you can get, you, you cannot receive. You won't get. And nobody will punish you. Get. Nobody will right. punish you. Nobody will stop you from doing anything. You will just not get the, get the benefits. Let me give you an example of a benefit. There's a company in Florida called Golden Cross. It's a Jamaican company. It's a Jamaican franchise. It's all over Florida. In fact, it's all over the southeastern United States. It is in Florida. So is a Bahamian company called Bamboo Shack. Yes. So is a Bahamian company called Bam Bahama Grill. Right. Now, they are all in, in the United States. Here's what is true. Under Jamaica's in the WTO, and so is the Bahamas. Under the rules of the WTO, the United States is obligated to treat Golden Crust just as it would treat any Canadian, Mexican, Cana German, or anybody else member's franchise. 
You cannot discriminate against them. They don't have such obligation to Van Bouchard or Bahama Grill. And that is because we're not... You're not a member. Right. You're not a member. Not a member. Membership yes. has its privileges. I understand. Similarly, they have to treat Golden Crush the same as they treat Burger King, McDonald's, and any other and American everyone. franchise. Right. Uh -huh. They have no such obligation to Bamboo Shack and Bamboo Grill. Right. Understood. Right. Okay. We're going to stick a pin right there because this is getting this good, is, right? I got this, questions. This My is, mind is going. Yeah. Well, we can, we can hold it for okay. until after the break. We have okay. so much more that we want to ask you and hear from you, and you're already giving some fantastic information. We're just going to take a quick commercial break. This is getting juicy. It's getting juicy. <laughs> and I'm sure you guys are enjoying it. So we're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back right after this. Gladiators, the Grand Bahama Port Authority Limited and its Invest Grand Bahama Small Business Bureau are proud to announce a Capital Arena initiative. Gladiators, battle for funding just got real. Gladiators brave and hungry enough to enter the Capital Arena must hold their own in a face-off with financial know-how and pure business savvy. If they are successful, they can walk away with up to $15,000 to start or grow their businesses. $15,000. Are you ready for the challenge? Gladiators, are you ready? Welcome back. We're here on Grand Bahama's Best Focus Forward, sponsored by Invest Grand Bahama. She is getting excited. We're talking excited. about the Bahamas' accession to the WTO, and we have the chief negotiator here with us, Mr. Shivago Lang. And we're having such a great discussion with you. You're giving us so much information. It's a lot to digest in the period of time that we have it, but I think this is fantastic for everybody. So he's laying it out. He's laying it out that we yeah. all can understand. I mean, he's answered like Layman's five terms. questions already. Yes, we've Perfect. got it to go. But we have so much more that we need to know. So. Tell us, why is trade important to the Bahamas? Well, you know, this, this wonderful life, quality of life we live. Not that the, the, the economy is bad, for, especially here in Grand Bahama, you know, things are tight. That's different. But notwithstanding, if you look at the quality of life we live, the kind of clothing we have, the homes we have, the cars we drive, etc. how do we do that? It's all by trade. You, ha you have tourists come here, you have financial services people come here, they spend monies here, you take that money and pocket it and go and purchase all these other things that you buy from abroad. Right. Most of what you consume, you consume from abroad. That's trade. Cross-border, it's called international trade. And so it is the thing that gives you the quality of life that you have. Right. If it's restricted, you have less such quality. Because if I say to you, no, you can't bring in the dress you're bringing in. You can't bring in the cars you're bringing in. You can only bring in this type of car. You can only bring in this kind of material. Then that restricts your opportunities right. and options and choices. So basically, are there any special provisions for free trade zones? Like free like port? Like free port They're in no, the WTO? Not special provisions, but they exist in all member and mo many member countries. So they're not unusual. There's no problems with a free trade zone. There's no problem. Okay, so what are some, okay. with all things considered, what are the advantages and disadvantages to the Bahamas joining the WTO? Right. The, the, the advantages among one of the things I mentioned to you that you, you your particular exports or your businesses abroad get to be treated equally as everybody else who's a member okay. and vis-a-vis -vis the member's own product or service at home. So that's a safeguard that you have. Okay. The other benefit is because the WTO becomes a way of reforming your economy. So the WTO, for instance, the membership requires uh, that you have com uh, intellectual property rights 
provisions mm -hmm. in your laws, you know, and that protects a creative person. All the copyrights, And it uh, yes. requires, uh, you have competition laws, and I don't know anybody in the Bahamas who don't want competition. Yes. Uh, generally speaking, you have to lower your custom duties, you know them things, we be ducking when we come <laughs> from shopping abroad. That's the number one thing like Who right does now? that? Mm -hmm. Who does that? Mm -hmm. Retail person wants to hear low yes. custom duties. Well, yes. on average, you charge now about 36%. After we have negotiated and completed negotiations, it'll be the average will be about 15% or lower. That means that if you're a business person in the Bahamas, that you are reducing by half that upfront money you normally would pay for customers. But it come out of my pocket. It won't come out of you. That's right. It won't come out of your pocket. It won't come out of your pocket. You'll have that money in your pocket, in your business, to do whatever it is that you would like to do. Now, I got a question so, pinned right there. Mm -hmm. We talk about perhaps customs duties may decrease. I want to know, for a friend, does that mean my VAT taxes may increase? Well, that's interesting. An interesting question in the context of free port. I'm asking for a friend now. No, I understand. But that's, <laughs> an, inter over here? But that's an interesting <laughs> question in the context of free port because right. here in free port, you don't pay taxes on many things if you're a business and the government... Right, because of the bond. You, and the government hasn't for years raised taxes, notwithstanding. How is that possible? Because just because the government gives that taxes doesn't mean it doesn't have a benefit to the economy. If I keep the money in your pocket, you're spending it in the economy. The economy, right. therefore, is growing. Yeah. So the government gets to increase the base from which it taxes and gets a benefit. Between 1993 and 2015, the government never raised a new tax, and raised a tax, or introduced a new tax. Never one time. But the revenue of the government increased from $900 million to $1.5 billion or thereabouts. How did that happen? How did that happen? The growth of the economy. Mm -hmm. And so what you do is you're trying to induce growth by giving people more disposable income. Now, in the Bahamas, we estimate the losses from custom revenue from the WTO accession to be of the order of $40 plus million or thereabouts. $40 million. That's not $40 million in one year. That's $40 million over time. Okay. And so you already had a value-added tax increase. Yes. That value-added tax increase was increased in part to pay some arrears you had. Well, when you didn't pay to your arrears, the increase is free. And so, so you make up the revenue. Ah. Okay. So I'm gotcha. thinking positively that I should not be anticipating immediate value-added tax increases. Uh, I, I, first of all, the, the Minister of Finance has already said that you will not get one. Mm -hmm. And I assure you, if you get a value-added tax in the increase in the future, I don't see it being earlier than five, six, seven years out. And if you get one, it won't be because of the WTO. So okay. basically, we're not being forced to join. And we're, we're not being strong-armed into doing things we don't want well, to do. Well, you know what I say to people who ask me about being forced to join? I took that up, me. I took that application form 18 years ago. If I was being strong armed by powerful people, it 18 years? Done. Yes, it would have been Seriously? <laughs> so America took 18 <laughs> years to make me do something? To make the do OECD something. blacklisted us the other day and we did something when? The next day. Okay, right, no, right. True. This is true. voluntary. Okay, great. So when we talk about Bahamas trade then, mm -hmm. we talk about the WTO. Mm -hmm. What are some of our imports and some of our exports right. as it relates to That's trade? That's always an interesting question because uh, most people only think of trade in terms of goods, tangible things, this mm -hmm. cup, you know, this mic. And the truth is trade is twofold, it's goods and services. So let me give you an example. If you sell a pound of lobster to the U.S., what do you get? get your funds for. U.S. dollars. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay, so you just sold a pound of lobster. That's a thing to the U.S. When you sell a room here to a tourist, what do you get? You also get U.S. US dollars. dollars. Exactly. So why is that not also international trade? You get, mm. the, it's, it's the same it's impact. The same thing. Anything that earns you a foreign currency is an internationally traded thing. Uh -huh. Okay. Doesn't matter that you didn't send it somewhere. Someone could come here to buy it. Just like when you go to Walmart to shop, you send, you are internationally trading. You're just going to buy your good. Oh. Okay, when you go to a U.S. educational institution, you are purchasing their education services and they are earning a international uh, revenue from you. So you are part of their international, international trade. trade. Okay. So uh, now I have another question. We actually have a question coming in, and I want to share this with you. Does the Grand Bahama Port Authority's business licensing policies regarding foreign versus domestic investors need to change? That is, uh, the required documents, the fees, et cetera. 
Um, well, I don't. I, I, I don't know that the Port Authority has a, a distinction between what they would charge to a foreigner and a Bahamian in the same kind of business. I don't know that. In any event, it would not be impacted by. It has nothing to do with the WTO. Okay. That's like the Bahamas government's licensing requirements for its internal um, um, business licensing has nothing to do with the WTO. Okay, so that's separate and apart. What, right. what, we, what we can't do is I can't take a Mexican business and a Canadian business and charge the Mexican business that I've allowed to invest here 20% duty on the same business and the uh, Canadian one 10%. Okay. 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 Um, we often hear the terms the Bahamas's the Bahamas goods offer and its service offer. What do these terms mean? Right. So one of the requirements, since we didn't join the WTO in 1995, all the countries that didn't join, the rules require that if you want to join, you have to negotiate with the members the terms of your entry. Okay. Okay? Again, negotiate the entrance. It isn't as if the WTO Keyword. is going to say, right. these are the rules, this is what you have to do, therefore just comply. Members may take an interest in you, all right? And so they may say, one member might say, you know, I'm a chicken my, um, exporter. Okay. And I would love to be able to export to your market, but your duties are a little high. Can you do something about that? Can okay. you reduce it? And I say, no, I can't. Then they may come back and say, yeah, but you know, we'd really love to be able to access your market a little bit more. And I say, okay, well, I go back and talk to my poultry uh, producers and producers. say, you know what, can oh. we do something on this? And then we work out what could be a doable situ situation for us. But if we can't, I just walk away. Well, I think you've sufficiently answered some concerns. I personally had knowing, wondering, and making sure that the government is making the right decisions for us. But like you're saying now, because we have the opportunity to negotiate, you're, we're negotiating on behalf of the Bahamian people and the Bahamas right. as a whole. Well, let me tell you how, how, the, how we negotiate, okay? Every time I go to Geneva, I go with a position that has been adopted after speaking with the industries that relate to a matter. Okay. Now, we have about 15 areas reserved for Bahamians. You and I are sitting at a table. Those 15 reserved areas in my offer was kept under the table, meaning okay. it isn't even for open for negotiations. No discussion. Now, somebody may no notice that and come back and say, but Lang, why isn't this on the table? You know. That's their right. We're negotiating. Right. Okay. And we then will talk and discuss about it. And they may, uh, may, may ask me to do something. And then I go back to the industry and I say, listen, this is what's being asked. What do you think? Then we might decide on a way forward with that. Seems fair enough. Seems That's fair enough. Seems so while, while we're looking at wrapping up, and see, this is a great discussion. We should have had an we entire have hour, hour just for, for all of this. And certainly I've got we, more we here on my paper to ask you. <laughs> we're probably, we're probably going to be able to get you to come back. Rapid certainly fire. We want to hear some, mo some more. <laughs> but what I, what I want to ask you just before we wrap up, there are any number of misconceptions yes. out there. And we would have covered some of the items, but is there any misconception that you want to stomp right now that Quickly. people need to know? Quickly. There's no free movement of people in the WTO process. It is Don't untrue. A untrue. lie, a big lie to suggest that if you join the WTO, a person from any country in the WTO would be able to in. automatically come to the Bahamas and work. It is untrue. Okay. And if you want to know that that is untrue, all the Latin American countries are in the WTO along with the USA. Why does Mr. Trump therefore need a wall? If you can freely oh, go can into freely there. Go. Right. It is, true. It right. is untrue. It's just untrue. <laughs> that Walmart will come in and set up. Walmart can only come in and set up if we negotiate an opening of distribution trade in the country. If we do so. If right. we agree to do so. Okay. Nobody can force us to do so. Okay. We didn't agree to do so. No free movement of people. people right. No retail giants no just coming up again. Un unless your government allows it. Unless your government allows it. Okay. And there is, it is untrue that you have to open up your government procurement to everybody. That is untrue because the go government procurement is governed by what is called a plurilateral agreement. A plurilateral agreement in the WTO is optional. You don't have to be a part of it. Okay. And there are only now 34 or thereabouts countries that are a part of the plurilateral agreement of procurement among the 164. Wow.
Wow. This is amazing. Okay. This is good stuff. We this certainly stuff. need. We certainly need to bring Mr. Lang back for us to have a, an even further He's discussion. He is filled back. with information. Right. Lots of things that we need to know, and we really appreciate having My you pleasure. here on the show with us. Thank you for coming to Focus Forward. Pleasure. Don't be a stranger. <laughs> we also want to thank you guys for being here with us. Alex, we had a good show today. We had a good show. You know, my seat is still hot. I'm moving. I got a lot of <laughs> so stuff. If that's a hot seat, you got a whole week. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we're gonna find. We're gonna fight to get him back as quick as possible Definitely. so we can get more information Definitely. to you. But I know one thing, the big WTO, the big black cloud over it has been um, dissembled. It's no gone. black cloud. No black, no black cloud. cloud. Understanding right. now that we are just making moves and changes that's going to better the country as a whole in the future. And that's always the plan. So we enjoy being with you here right at Focus Forward each and every week here on Grand Bahamas Best Talk Show. And until next time, I'm Glendia Sweeting. And I'm Alex Thompson. Informing you about the positive things that happen when you focus forward. You've been listening to Focus Forward, sponsored by Invest Grand Bahama. Like us on Facebook at Invest Grand Bahama Small Business Bureau to stay updated. And drop a business card at the Grand Bahama Port Authority receptionist desk to have your business featured on our show. Tune in next Thursday, same time, same place, for Focus Forward. Forward.